Welcome to episode 2 of a series about DIY equipment for home chemistry labs, which is designing and making retort stands with boss heads and clamps, including both 3D printed and wooden versions. Retort stands and clamps are crucial pieces of equipment when doing procedures such as distillations, or in general for holding glassware in place while performing chemical reactions. There are both 3D printed versions, and a version made from wood, which simply requires a handsaw and drill for those without access to a 3D printer. The wooden version not only enables a robust lab clamp that can withstand elevated temperature, but for which also truly does enable a DIY lab clamp for just a few dollars, without the hidden need of hundreds of dollars or more in tools. As I said, this is the second in a series documenting the design and making of various homemade lab equipment. The first episode shows the design and making of a lab scissor jack, the link is in the description below, but also a number of other items have already been completed such as a digital thermometer with up to eight simultaneous sensors, Bluetooth controlled and recording via an Android phone app, and a digital balance made from readily available and inexpensive parts. These episodes will be uploaded over the coming weeks, so make sure to subscribe to be notified when they become available. Other planned DIY equipment include a fume cupboard, which is an essential safety item, a magnetic stirrer from salvaged parts from a broken desktop computer and discarded washing machine, a temperature controlled incubator for microbiological experiments, a melting point apparatus to help identify synthesized chemicals, and continuing the theme of quantification, a DIY spectrophotometer for colorimetry and spectrometry. Before getting into the details of the lab clamps and retort stand, the obligatory self-promotion. Starting with the 3D printed version of the lab clamp, I will briefly go through the Fusion 360 design, then the 3D printing and settings used, and finally the assembly of the parts. A further section details the wooden version, which both shows how to make a functional lab clamp without needing a relatively expensive 3D printer, but which also is capable of handling elevated temperatures. A lab clamp is relatively simple. It is just a set of jaws that can open and close, with additional movement in two axes, up and down and swiveling around the retort stand, together with the ability to be positioned closer into or out from the retort stand itself. However, one of the complicating factors is that the axis of the adjustment screw which controls opening of the jaws changes angle with respect to the jaws when the position of the jaws is altered. This means that the retaining nuts of the jaw position adjustment screw need to pivot. These pivoting components are just cylinders into which a hex nut can be inserted, which adds strength and stops wear over time, as opposed to using the plastic material itself for the thread. The circular section of the jaw is dimensioned to accommodate the condensers of my distillation equipment, which are about 40mm in diameter. This size is also convenient for the typical neck size of flasks and test tubes, etc. The wider the sides of the jaws mean the greater the contact area with the item being held, and less local stresses imposed, particularly for long equipment such as condensers. However, very wide jaws would limit the clamp with respect to items with short necks such as flasks. So the jaws are designed to have extensions that can be mounted and removed as necessary using dovetail joints. Here are some time-lapse videos showing the various components being printed with the relevant 3D printer and slicer software settings given as annotations. I used PETG rather than PLA as the physical strength is higher with PETG and PETG can handle higher temperatures, typically 75 degrees Celsius compared to PLA which generally needs to be kept below 55 degrees Celsius unless it deforms. The various STL files are available from my website. After you have printed the various pieces, at a minimum you will need the left and right jaws and also two copies of the swivel joint, 
you will also need some 6mm threaded rod and a few corresponding nuts, one of which is filed smooth on the outside so that it is circular. Important that this can rotate in its eventual slot, so when it rolls smoothly you have it right. Starting with the swivel joints, insert a hex nut into one of the cylindrical pieces, which will be in the moving jaw, and the filed smooth hex nut into the other cylindrical piece. This will be in the fixed jaw. The filed smooth hex nut should rotate freely within its cylindrical piece, while the normal hex nut should not rotate, and its cylindrical piece move as a whole with the nut. Insert the cylindrical piece with the normal hex nut into the left hand jaw, and then the cylindrical piece into the right hand jaw. Make sure that the nuts face outward, and that the threads can be seen through the slots in the side of the jaw components. Insert the piece of threaded rod that will form the jaw adjustment screw into the right hand jaw, the one with the hex nut that was filed smooth. Use some Loctite glue or similar, so that the threaded rod will be fixed to the nut. Thread the nut through far enough so that the knob can be later attached. Then insert another hex nut into the slot at the rear of the right hand jaw. This is to provide an attachment point for the rod that will enable the jaw assembly to be moved closer or further away from the retort stand. A hex nut is used as this allows a more robust attachment to the 3D printed plastic part rather than just using the plastic itself for the thread. Ok then next need to wait for the Loctite glue to set. Once the glue is set, check that the threaded rod that forms the jaw adjustment screw moves freely and that the swivel moves back and forth, but the nut should not move up or down the thread, just spin in place with the threaded rod. Then need to thread the other end of the rod through the hex nut on the other jaw. Continue threading the jaw onto the rod until the hinge point at the rear of the jaw is aligned. Then insert the 30mm bolt into the hinge and secure with a nut. The adjustment screw should now open and close the jaws. Insert a hex nut into the knob. Again a hex nut is used to give a more robust attachment rather than just using the plastic for the thread. And finally, with some Loctite or similar glue, fasten the knob onto the threaded rod to finish the adjustment screw. The wooden version of the lab clamp, which simply requires a handsaw and drill, is for those without access to a 3D printer. The wooden version not only enables a robust lab clamp that can withstand elevated temperature, but which also truly does enable a DIY clamp for just a few dollars, without the hidden need of hundreds of dollars or more in tools and equipment. Even though I recommend PETG for the 3D printed version, at temperatures of around 75 degrees Celsius, this material will begin to deform. So a wooden version of the lab clamp is also handy for situations in which equipment to be held is expected to be hotter than this. The design was done in Fusion 360, which allows generating dimension drawings from which you can work out your cut list etc. The hardware required and cut list is shown, and is based upon stock 20 by 12 mm dressed hardwood, available from my local hardware store. The various hex bolts and dowel etc. are similarly standard and should be readily available. The construction of the wooden lab clamp starts with cutting the various pieces of timber required to size. I have a crosscut saw, which makes things a little easier, but a hand saw would obviously do the job if you don't have access to power tools. Next is to measure and mark up the various pieces for drilling of the various necessary holes and slots. And then onto the actual drilling, I used a drill press, but this could be done with a hand drill, you just would need to take some extra care. After drilling holes to remove the majority of the material from the side slots, use a file to clean up and finish forming the slot, through which the jaw adjustment screw will eventually fit. Next, change the drill bit to bore the vertical hole through the jaw piece in which the pivot joints will be housed. These vertical holes in the jaws need to be a tight fit with the 12mm dowel from which the pivot joints are made, so I drilled the hole a little undersize and then filed out the hole to snugly fit the dowel. With the various pieces cut and holes and slots drilled, the jaws can now be assembled, glued and clamped together and then allowed to set overnight. While waiting for the glue on the jaw pieces to dry, started making a retort stand out of some scrap materials. A retort stand is simply a vertical rod fixed into a sturdy base, so your ingenuity and whatever materials you have on hand come into play. I happen to have some 12mm threaded steel rod 
left over from wall reinforcing and an old hardwood tread from a demolished stairwell. So I cut and sanded a portion of the hardwood tread to make a base, arbitrarily made it 30 centimeters, about 12 inches long. You want the base to be long and wide enough to be stable, but kept to a minimum to avoid difficulty with benchtop footprint. Drilled an appropriate hole for the threaded rod, inserted the rod, and as simple as that, a perfectly functional retort stand. After the glue had dried on the pieces making the clamp jaws, time to align the pieces and drill the hole for the rear hinge. After marking out the location of the mouth of the jaws, I removed the material using a rasp. Similarly as with the 3D printed version of the lab clamp, one of the complicating factors is that the axis of the adjustment screw which controls opening of the jaws changes angle with respect to the jaws when the position of the jaws is altered. This means that the retaining nuts of the jaw position adjustment screw need to pivot. These pivoting components are just cylinders cut from 12mm dowel into which a hex nut can be inserted. In order to make these pivoting components, I first use a short piece of dowel into which I will drill a 5mm diameter longitudinally centred hole to make a very simple DIY jig to help with drilling holes both perpendicular and centred to the side of cylindrically shaped pieces such as dowel that will form the pivot. A technique to ensure that you drill exactly vertically straight through a cylindrical workpiece is to align and hold the actual drill bit in a vise on the drill press workbed instead of in the chuck and then insert the workpiece in this case the short section of dowel that will be the simple DIY drill centering jig that helps with drilling both perpendicular and centered on the pivoting component into the chuck. This means that the spinning action of the drill chuck will ensure that the workpiece is centered and also that the hole is drilled vertically. The DIY drill centering jig which is obviously the same diameter as the dowel to be drilled, is simply placed in the drill vise and after securing in place and then aligning the drill bit, easily enables a perpendicular and centered hole to be drilled in the longitudinal face of the dowel. This five millimeter hole will be where the jaw adjustment screw formed from a piece of threaded rod will be later inserted. The piece of dowel with the 5mm perpendicular hole is then cut off and this piece will form one of the pivot joints. In order to make a robust thread within the piece of dowel that forms the pivot, a slot is made to enable a hex nut to be inserted. This just requires careful removal of the majority of the material with a couple of closely spaced holes and then some filing to clean out the remaining material. The slot in one of the pivot pieces needs to snugly fit a hex nut so that the nut doesn't rotate, whereas in the other pivot piece, the slot needs to be sufficiently large to enable the rounded off filed circular hex nut to rotate smoothly. Now for the final assembly. Sanded smooth the jaw pieces after rounding off the edges with a file and hammered in a barbed threaded insert into the rear of the fixed jaw into which a 6mm rod will later be placed. The barbed insert is probably optional, but again, this gives a more robust connection between the metal rod and the wooden clamp jaw. After inserting the pivots into the jaws, the threaded rod that will form the jaw adjustment screw is inserted and screwed through far enough to leave sufficient threaded rod exposed so that later the knob can be attached. Then some Loctite or similar glue is used to fix the threaded rod to the hex nut that was previously filed smooth so that it rotates freely in its pivot. While the Loctite was drying, time to make a knob for the jaw adjustment screw. 
I would normally just use a 3D printed knob to overcome my lack of woodworking skill, but in this case for completeness in showing how to make a wooden clamp, I make a knob from a piece of material left over from drilling out holes in another project with a hole saw. Again you can use your ingenuity and whatever material you may have available. I just marked off 45 degree sections and using a round rasp file file down to approximately half the diameter of the rasp at each mark to form the knurled edges of the knob. And then cleaned off and rounded the edges. Drilled a centered 5mm hole for the hex nut and cut a hexagon shape rebate so that the nut could be glued into the knob and sit flush with the surface. It's a bit rough but you get the idea and you can see why I just use a 3D printer normally. Okay once the glue is dried on the jaw adjustment screw the jaw should now be able to be opened and closed. Just need to insert the rear metal rod, attach the knob and assembly of the wooden clamp is finished. Well that's it for another episode of making DIY lab equipment. If you found this useful I would appreciate if you could take the time to like, comment and or subscribe. As I said, this is the second in a series documenting the design and making of various homemade lab equipment. A number of other items have already been completed, with the next video currently in preparation for upload about a digital thermometer with up to 8 simultaneous sensors, Bluetooth control and recording via an Android phone app. So make sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when this is available.